Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Muppet, and this is going to be another Daily Masters. And for some reason, I actually waited two or two minutes since the game to start casting. I was just, oh man, I was feeling a bit funny, so I thought I'd give it a sec. But yeah, we're going to be back into the game right now, and they haven't really done much. I mean, this guy's got a gateway over there. This guy's got a spawning pool over there, so nothing crazy has really happened. So let's get started as introducing these uh, players. It is going to be a PVZ right here. Down the bottom left side of the map is going to be none other than Tefl, who we have seen a bit of, I think, in our replays all over the place. He is from Poland. He plays for Team Digni Dignitas. Dignitas. Team Dignitas. And he's uh, number 76 on the WCS with 575 points. So very, very awesome right there. Uh, it looks like he's currently going for... Actually went for a late hatchery right here. Went for a spawning pool quite early. And I think, yeah, he, he got the queen out after the hatchery. But that's actually quite a late hatchery. So, yeah, very interesting to see uh, why he's doing this. Maybe, maybe he just forgot. Maybe it was just such a big distance to the hatchery. I do not know, but the point is, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a pool hatch or anything like that. It was a fit, completely finished pool and then a hatch. So, yeah, we'll see. He's not really building any links early, so I'm not quite sure what the reasoning behind that is. But he is going to be building two queens out of the one hatchery. So, and yeah, on Honor's side, we do have uh, Honor. Yeah, he's the purple Protoss player, and he is from Germany. And he plays for the team Alien Invasion. And... Yeah, I do not believe he has participated in a, any sizable WCS events in 2013. Because I, he doesn't have a WCS rank. So, yes. Wow, he's actually building a ton of stuff over here. Oh, that's, that's his natural. I feel like that's halfway across the map, but it's actually his natural. So, uh, that's pretty nuts. Actually, I just recognize this map. This is the map that I always seem to get on 1v1 and always seem to lose. This is the map where uh, I had massive amounts of, uh, what was it, Colossus with uh, Stalker Zealot support. And I made it all the way into about this point of the enemy's base. And then he came out with like 10 benches and I was like, you son of a bitch. Well, and it just, I didn't have enough Stalkers. I just had mainly Colossus, Zealot and... My stalker numbers were not high enough. He actually ended up beating me, which was pretty horrendous in that game, simply because I could not deal with the uh, Banshees enough. I finally managed to get out some Void Rays, and they helped. But by the time I got out a decent enough Void Rays, he'd rebuilt, and he just maxed out on Marines. And I was like, you got to be crapping me, because all my Colossus were dead by then. And now I had Void Rays versus Marines, and you all know how that turns out. So, yeah... Unfortunate, but looks like uh, Teffel is going to be going for a Roach Warren, going to be going for a bunch of Lings with speed as well, so he'll be able to put some nice early pressure on the map, although four sentries on the field for Honor, so he should be more than capable of dealing with a few Lings, assuming that he stays inside his base, which it looks like he's not going to be doing. Now he's running back, and the Lings just going straight through. They can force field over there if they want to. There we go, beautiful. One probe does get uh, trapped, but the rest of them... Ooh, he's actually trapping them inside the base. And now they're all going to get owned, because they are going for this pylon, instead of going for the... Uh, oh, they've got a Nexus Overcharge as well, so... Yes, they all died quite horrifically in that battle. Very nice play by Honor to uh, force field this ramp, and then just wipe everything out and uh, overcharge the Nexus. And a lot of Lings died there, but... Teffel taking the opportunity, or actually that looks like that push was to secure his third base because he must have had the third base already on the way. And now the third base is fully up and running. And now he just needs to get his roaches out and he will be fine. Bunch of sentries coming out. He does have four roaches out already. And they're, they're, these guys do a pretty good job, but here come the roaches. And he may have to run here because I don't think he's going to be very good at dealing with roaches. There we go, just buying himself some time to get out of there. Gonna be uh, running into the uh, into the long grass. Hopefully that helps him out. I don't think it will, but he is taking the long way back into his third base. And, oh man, if Teppel figures out there's a base there, that could be phenomenal. That could be really, really phenomenal, because he could put so much early pressure on it. 
And <laughs> I mean, here we go. The roach is coming up. They see uh, they see a full block here. They also see a couple of stalkers, which are not good. But he's got to guess. There's a third base there. And ouch. That means that Teffel knows about the third base. He can, uh, I don't know what he can do about this. He can try and match the uh, macro by going for a fourth base of his own. Or he can just put a ton of pressure on this third base, this still developing third base. Ton of roaches to see if he can take it out. Um, I think he has to do one or the other. If he just sort of sits back and just goes to his own pace with three bases, he sort of techs up slowly. He is going to get owned. He is going to get owned by uh, Honor's incredible macro in about five minutes' time because that macro will just be over the moon. And so he has to do something. He has to do something very soon. Whether it's uh, whether it's getting a fourth base, trying to match the macro, or whether it's building a crap ton of stuff and just going for it. He is going for it. Here he's got a massive, massive amount of roaches coming out. This is going to be a huge army. And he's going to be he's going to be trying to topple one of these bases, probably the third. But he may try and be sneaky and go for the expansion as well. I just do not know. Although the mothership core is going to be seeing them coming up the center lane, and uh, so that surprise attack on this base, which he was hoping to do, turned out to not be a surprise after all. Honor cramming these roaches in and just wiping them out. This immortal doing so much damage right now. And that was very, very unfortunate because, I mean, he did what he had to do. He went in there, he did a lot of early damage. Well, he's trying to do early damage. But the force fields and the immortals are just screwing him over so badly. I mean, how are you possibly supposed to deal with this many force fields as a Roach Force? You can't. So, I mean, the only, the only way... He could have taken this base out nice and early was with Roaches. He didn't have time to really tech up. But you can see that that totally failed him. And so now he's going for option number two, which is getting a fourth base. So he didn't leave it too long. He left it for as long as he thought he could. He thought he had a chance of taking those bases. Turned out he was wrong. So now he needs to get the fourth base. He needs to start getting something else. And that something else is going to be the Hydras. And he's also getting some Ling support as well. Whether that's for Bailings or just for straight up Lings, I'm not sure. But I'm guessing it's just for straight up Lings because they would really really annoy the immortals on the force and yeah now now he should be uh, now he should be okay he's gonna have a better unit composition to deal with this uh, immortal heavy stalker heavy army with the lings and the hydralisks and he's got his fourth base coming up and he's also got a spire as well so he's getting lots of different options and let's hope that he can uh, get his economy up into a uh, advantageous position he's already doing very well at the moment with 71 but as you can see Honor has 70, and that is incredible for a Protoss player to be that high. Zerg players, you kind of expect it a bit more, but Protoss, man, you know, very rarely will you see him get up to that many workers. So he's doing a phenomenal job. He's probably going to slow down right now. Here we go. Moving in. Oh, the High Templar getting caught out of position. That is not fun. Here we go. The main force coming out, though. He does have Storm researched, and these guys do have a bit of energy, these High Templars. So he could potentially see some big storms coming down on this army. And Teffel, man, he's got the numbers, but I don't think he's got the uh, the high enough tech units to deal with this. Because a storm is going to waste those guys so quickly. Trying to dodge it, doing a very good job. Another storm comes down. The stalkers come in. There's a very large amount of stalkers. There's not enough hydras. And the stalkers, I think they're going to back off now. They are taking quite a bit of damage. And the lings coming in are really, really helping Teffel quite a bit because of course stalkers are horrendous when it comes to dealing with links so I love the link support in this case because Honor really really has got a ton of stalkers and the fact that they're constantly trying to hit the links instead of um, instead of hitting the hydras or the roaches is really really saving Teffel's ass right now because yeah I mean they're, they're very very good at dealing with roaches they're okay with dealing with hydras but yeah but sending links in to fight these stalkers exceptionally good move by Teffel, absolutely exceptional, but you just don't want to get caught in this case because he just does not have the range to hit those Stalkers, and the Stalkers do have the range to hit them. He's got the range with the Hydras right now, oh, but Zealot's coming out to hit the Hydras, the Ling's coming in, are the Ling's going to get off on the Stalkers? It looks like they are, and now this is the spot that Teffel wants to be at with Ling's, 
doing the harassment, and then the Hydras are just free to hit the Stalkers. Look at how many gateways this guy has got, but take it out all the pylons, and they all go dark. That is huge, because uh, Honor's reinforcement capabilities have just gone down the toilet, and... Oh man, is that all those? Is that all the gateways he actually had? One, two, he's got only three. And he built the rest at his third base. That is why you do not build all of your production capability at your outlying base, because that shit can happen. And then you can't produce anything else. So, pretty big mistake on Honor's part to build him out all there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, just great, great comeback by Teffel. I mean, the use of Roach Hydra... With Lings out the front to hit the Stalkers. Exceptional. Exceptionally good play there. And we saw how well it worked when it was just Roaches and Hydras. The Roaches and Hydras were being pushed back by the massive amount of Stalkers. As soon as you introduced Lings in there, the Stalkers started falling. And the Roach Hydra just kept on trucking. They were not taking any damage at all because, of course, the Stalkers automatically focus on the closest unit, which is the Lings. So, very, very nice. And... Yeah, thank you very much for watching this game. It's an exceptional game, and we can see why Teflon is such an exceptional player. So, congratulations to him. Nice seeing Honor playing a game for the first time. I don't think we've seen him before, so very, very awesome. And hopefully we see some more of these players later on. So, stay tuned for that. This has been Harry Muffet. I hope you enjoyed this game.